Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, this is our last class uh, for the Family Book Creator settings. Uh, this time we're going to be covering the text and page layout and the about section right here. And I'm actually going to start with this about section. Uh, just because it will go into a place. Uh, this is where you basically just enter in your registration info, uh, your name, email, serial, the place. Place is optional. Uh, when you do get your license, it is very important because your serial number is tied to the name. So however the name is on your like, registration code, that's how you should enter it. Um, and it's also uh, nice to know um, if you ever say get a new computer and you want to move this over and let's just say, oh, I forgot the email that's got my registration code. If you come to the old computer and I won't do it here. All you got to do is click on the serial number box and your ser serial number will will show up and then you can copy and paste that. Uh and then it will stay visible until you click off of it. So for obvious reasons, I'm not gonna uh, click on it here, but that way you can always access what your serial number was if you don't have that original email. Um, it's also, and then <clears throat> the reason why I'm starting with this is because uh, the name section, place, email, um, these are also codes that can be used at other where you know where uh you know it says author.name. Uh, I think like on the title page. Oh yeah, let me let me just load up my Kennedy settings real quick here. Oops. Where did I go? Yeah, because you know here where it says like author.name, this is where it takes that name from. And you can also do author.place, author.email, and it will put in what you've entered in here. So, and that will also go into effect on this text and page lay layout for the header and footer. So, I mean, so that's basically all there is about the about section. So, uh, <clears throat> So on text and page layout, here's where you can set up your margins. Uh, I've got these set up. These work well for me on Lulu. Uh, I'm sure if you're in like the UK or other, I'm guessing it takes these from your system settings where it displayed in like cent uh, centimeters or maybe even millimeters. I'm not sure, but uh, the mirror margins for double-sided printing uh, what this will be is like if you got a a book, you know, the inside margin, you know, because there's typically a crease, will have uh, extra spacing in it. Um, let me just see if I can get this to. Let me move this over here. Show it in like two page view. Let me just close this. Um, and now this is weird because it starts with, a um, the page order is reversed. It always starts page one on the left-hand side, even though this is technically the right side page. Uh, let me just see if there's something a little bit more obvious. Right down on the appendixes. Well, yeah, you can see here, because now, just remember, this is the right side. You can see this uh, margin here is smaller than this margin here. This is the outside margin, because remember, this is actually the right side. And then over here, see this margin over here, you know, that's what the gutter margin's like. If you don't... Uh, 
and different headers and footers too. If you turn off mirror margins, you know, you no longer have the gutter, every page will be the same. Uh, so yeah, so see here, you can see right here, see every page has got the exact same margins. And likewise, everything, you know, the headers, footers, um, the page numbers are all the same location. It's actually got the same header for every page. Um, let's go back down here to... single page yeah yeah so here it's obvious you know that you can see how the margin is shifted so if, if you are printing you know probably if you're printing where you're in a spiral bound the gutter is probably not as important but if you are printing you know where it's a bound copy the gutter is important um and then likewise, you can also specify the size. They've got the standard US letter or A4, or you've got uh, um, the ISO A4. And some people have asked, well, how, how, and you can also set a custom page size. Some people have said, well, how can I print landscape mode? Uh, Rebecca Shamblin does like a landscape. Well, all you gotta do is reverse these two numbers. So instead of eight and a half by 11, which is standard US letter, you just type in 11 by 8.5, whoops. And now you've got a landscape book. Um, you know, so, so yeah, so it will, you can kind of see it's kind of more of a landscape book now. Um, with the, uh, let me go back here. Um, page break settings. These are like the start of the family sections. Let me just go back here to, uh, the start. No. no. Actually, I'm going to just reclose this. I like that little header. Yeah. So these are all the family sections, you know, the family. And these are like, this is basically the, these bookmarks. These are just the, how they are on the title page or the contents. These are the title pages, so. So basically these will all start on, uh, right now they're not starting on, uh, they're not starting on a new page. The, the main ones between the generations, these will start on a new page, but between them, um, uh, right now there is no page break between family sections. If you tell it you want them to start on a new page, And then as you get here, okay, here you see Edward uh, Moore Kennedy. And then here he is with uh, his first wife and then here with the second wife. So they're just all on a, a new page. So each family section starts on a new page. Uh, if you want it, you know, be even or odd. And like I said, this is really only gonna matter if you got mirror margins enabled. Otherwise, they're probably really, well, I guess you could still do it. Some people may want like an even page because they want like the family tree chart on the left-hand side and then some of the text uh, on the right. Um, so 
so yeah, so I'll still do it and you'll note, okay, uh, well, this starts page nine, 10. Because the new page, oh, they always, well, they always will start on the odd page for the first generation, second generation, third generation, but the next ones will uh, start 10 and then, well, now that's a blank and then so 12. So these will all start on an even page number. And you can kind of tell if you go on the table of contents here. First generation always starts on like second. They all do, but all the subsequent will, they'll start on an even page number. And likewise, if you do like the odd page, you know, so it'd be the right hand one, then it just basically does uh, similar only here they're on odd page numbers but you will get some like i said occasional blank pages this way and like i said see this it's like it's just a page there's no header footer nothing it's just a blank page but you know just to force it to be ill it inserts blank pages just to insert that they'll be on and not page and like i said that's all just personal preference um okay hanging indents this is uh um uh, this pertains to um let's just start right here this is a hanging indent because here is the number and then it goes over and then okay here's the person's info everything's lined up if we tell it no hanging if we tell it no hanging indent then see here's the number and then so everything is you know it's like that so again this is a personal preference um let's just go back here so so that's with the hanging indent without the hanging indent so that's what that does um and then these are, uh, and then for, it says before, after, it says like small, medium, large, after. This is uh, the spacing. Uh, in the book here, it does actually specify a small is like, it's a quarter of a, a quarter of a line width. It would be before the start of their section. Medium is, Half a line, large is a full line spacing. So it's kind of like if you want to use, uh, well, uh, let me just show. Um, you can kind of see uh, here, see how there, there's kind of like a half of a line space between Augusta Sicky and Joseph died, and then what the more facts, residents. Um, here and let me see if I did large. Uh, yeah, see here I did large, and then see there it's there's more space between them. And then let me let me move this over. Large, none, yeah, I see. No, no, that one's not a, here we go. Hanging large, none. Oh, yeah. Here, this one's probably more obvious with the facts where I set that to none because it's, it's just more obvious, so you, it just, eliminates that spacing or see here there's a little line so it's it, it's really fine tuning between sections how, how you want that displayed so um and yeah and you can yeah that's the facts and event list you know how much spacing it 
there is a um, thing in the user's guide. Let me just, does it, um, yeah, indents and spacings, that kind of explains this. So, yeah, the following paragraph, you know, so it's like none, it's like before or after the current paragraph, it's all before the current um, paragraphs for these various sections. Um, so the parent section, the list of children's and facts and events. So that's just something you can do just to fine tune the spacing, whether, you know, if you'd set it all to none, then it's just going to be one line for everything. Uh, setting it, like, you know, maybe small or something like after, you know, it, can, it kind of breaks up the sections a little bit more. Um, let me just see some of these. Question, Randy said mine is grayed out on indexes page. Oh, create page numbers with hyperlinks. Oh, this is from before. Oh, yeah, right there. Create page numbers with hyperlinks. That's the ones I was looking at. That was that question right before we started. Um, and if it's grayed out, then it'd have to be some other overriding setting. Uh, I don't know. That's, you could ask Stefan on that, too. Um, Let's see. Oh, Rosemary said, yeah, I'm in the UK and page layout items are still listed in inches, not changeable. Um, Charlene, what is a hanging paragraph? Uh, well, the, like I said, this is the hanging paragraph. So it's like everything is lined up after with the text. This one that's the hanging without the hanging see it's just like this and then everything's lined up after that number so that's the hanging paragraph uh can you still fill blank pages with word documents well you can add them but like i said when when if you do this in word if you're telling something to start on a new pa a new page, it does, in Word it will actually create a thing. It will say a new odd page, a new even page. So Word is actually inserting the page too. So you would have to add in the document itself. You know, so uh, basically, if you don't want blank pages, then don't use the start on even or odd. I mean, but uh, Renee said, can we only use the default settings in Family Tree Maker, such as burial for cemetery information, or will about FBC allow us to use our own custom facts with creating a fact? Yeah, you can. In Family Book Creator, you can use any text built in or custom. So they uh, they all show up here. I was under the impression by some other people that I was uh, giving that question to. They said you could only it would only use the default settings, but they may have been talking about. Uh, if you use the default settings and or if you use uh, customized settings, other software wouldn't recognize it or perhaps Ancestry. Maybe I got that confused. Yeah, it's like, well, it's. Because I have. Gene, most genealogy <laughs> programs allow custom facts and it's like. And any well, that's facts my will show up in this list, so. So. I was starting to change everything back. I mean, I've been back and forth and back and forth trying to figure out what is I need to have done on my cleanup and what I don't. Mm -hmm. 
and everybody kept saying, no, don't use, don't use burial, uh, you know, or don't use cemetery. You got to use burial. So I started changing everything back to burial so that family book creator would just, recognize it. Just, just do, do what you want. Just be consistent. Okay. Cause I, 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 I did it separate because to me, burial was the day of the burial, maybe the, uh, funeral home and then cemetery is the the place where they you know all this is taken but it's where the where they're buried uh, i know it's together but to me it needed to be separated out yeah no like i said just do it how you want it your tree your rules just okay. be consistent and during said, sure. but but using an ancestry cemetery might not sink. That's not true. Custom facts sink. So, okay, thank you. Uh, Doreen said, if we don't use the even or odd, would you use no page break to prevent blank pages, or use fan? Um, that's all on. That's all your preference, because. Uh, You know, some people just don't like the blank pages, you know. You know, me, I, I don't use that just because I want to try to s cut down on pages, but it's got nothing to do with using new, new or even pages. It's some people like it to start on a new page because it's. Uh, um, because. Uh, you know, it just starts on the first page, you know, especially the family tree charts at the top. And so it's just personal preference. Uh, and there's even a section on if like those family sections, like how I, uh, let me go back here. You know, where Edward Moore Kennedy had more than one spouse. Like I said, this is, uh, I, I don't have an uh, example. Um, whoops, where is this? No, oh, whoops, that's hanging. Oh, I don't have that word uh, open. You can also in the uh, where is it? family sections. You can also uncheck this. Use single sections per relationship. And then uh, Edward Moore's, it would only show the preferred spouse at, with the family tree chart. Uh, but, basic, but basically it wouldn't split, split Edward Moore Kennedy with his two wives into separate sections on separate pages. But it would only do the family tree chart for the preferred spouse. Um, Thomas said, do blank page, blank pages have a page number on them? No, they are completely blank. Uh, let me, uh, get back to here one. I'm going to show fit to height. Yeah, because see there, uh, yeah, see, here's a blank page, and see here, you can see there's absolutely nothing on it. There's no header, no footer. There's no page number. It is literally a blank sheet of paper. Because it's like, there it goes, it's page 10. It's blank, and then it's page 12. So it is literally a blank sheet of paper. So... Um, do we have any other questions on here or else I'll go on to this header and footer section. Okay, this is the last one. Um, oh, uh, oh, I think I wanted to see what, uh, well, okay, no, I'm going to keep it on here. Okay, first off, uh, you can tell it what's going to be the text on. Okay, this is first with mirror margins. Because if you are going to get professionally 
printed or bound mirror mark. It works nicely. But anyway, you, you can have a separate text where it tells you what you want. Uh, it defaults chapter name and then the book title centered. And if, like I said, you look. Uh, yeah. Uh, If you look on here, uh, let me, you'll see, okay, this is an odd page. So it's that's the book title, which like I said, it comes from, from here. And then all these families starting, you know, these are first generation. These are the chapter titles, first generation, second generation, third generation, index places, index of individuals. So you'll see, okay, descendants on that one, page nine, then family of the starting person. So uh, yeah, see family of the starting, family of the descendants. So first generation, then it goes see the descendants of that first generation because then that's the even page. Uh, and like I said, you can change that if you'd want, like, no title, you know, the author name, author email. And like I said, that all goes back to this. So it's whatever's here, whatever's here. Uh, you know, and then, uh, like I said, book title, you've got all the same base things if you want the book title or the chapter name. And then if you want, like, a line below header. Like I said, that's what this is. Line below the header, there's that line. You, I mean, you got the option of uh, without lines or borders. Um, yeah, so here you can see the header. You know, there's no line now. You can tell that, you know, use the line above and, and below. You know, and so it looks like that. And then you, then we've got the stripe version, you know, you can do a box. And you can do a box with shadow. So like I said, it's just kind of whatever you prefer, but then that will be for all of them. Um, and I said, how does mirroring in FBC work with the MS Word being brought into FBC? Does a Word doc get formatted automatically? Any Word document you bring in to FBC, it strips out the margins. So it uses the margins from the book. Dean says, is it possible to have more than one item of text in the header or footer, say like author name and email address? Um, not, not, uh, well, well, you could because, well, no, not on the same line. You you can't have it automatically. You can always turn around and do it in Word. You know, uh, you can then modify the header and footer as you as you wish. Um, same thing like with the footer. You know, you can basically you got these same options. I mean, that's one thing you could do is if you'd want say, you could do say. Um, uh, what was that chapter? I mean, likewise, like further, further, you could also do say something like author name on one and your author email, you could add that into the footer, you know, so, um, and then the page number, you can tell it where you want it in the header, footer, and the page style, you know. And where, where uh, if you tell it to do something, um, 
you know, here I said like uh, author name and then even uh, though I told it to be on the right, it did the page number. So you can have them both on the same side. So you could do something like that. Um, let's see, we got a bunch of, let's see. Oh, Stefan responded to the creating page numbers with hyperlinks. If you change the way your name is displayed in the about, will it still be connected to your license number or should it be kept the way you originally entered? Keep it the way you originally entered it because it is tied to the serial number. So if you change it, I mean, at least drastically, it will come back and saying, well, that's not registered. So like I said, so if you would want your name something different in the header footer, you can always just manually change it in Word. Uh, and likewise, like for the title page, uh, uh, in the title page here, you know, you can always, uh, um, you know, rather than say author compiled by author name, you can always just Type in your name, you know, you know, however you want it. So you don't have to use those uh, custom fields. You know, you you could say, let's just say my, you know, you could do, you know, however you want it. You know, or if if you're a woman, you know, maybe you want say Mary. Oops. Mary Smith, Nee Jones, you know, whatever. Or if you'd want it, you know, something like that. You can do that. So you don't have to use those custom things. Uh, where it goes into using it here, though, if you would want to do that and, and the name isn't how it is in there, you'd have to change that in, um, in Word. So, uh, da, da, da. Dean says, yeah, but not on the same page or even or odd. That is correct for those header footer. You know, it's like you, you've only got one option here. Um, so, like I said, if you want to do anything else, you know, you can save it in Word and change it there. Because then you can just put the header and footer however you want it. Um, does the book title come just from within the stuff on the title page? Yes, that does. That, is, that does come from the predefined title page. Uh, title page, you know, so it'll be like, in this case, descendants of the couple, uh, you know, this, so this is the title. If you would want some, something different, you know, like say, uh, just Joe, like say Joe and Rose Kennedy or Fitzgerald, I guess, or, well, no, it would be Kennedy. If you'd want this to be say Joe and Rose Kennedy, um, And you would want that in the header. You'd have to change that word directly. So, yeah, if you want a custom footer copyright, yeah, you would have to do that in Word. Typically, typically you don't have the even in books you don't have the copyright notice on every single page. Uh, and if you look, uh, it default. It defaults uh, in the colophon um, to to uh, to be that you know it does do that copyright notice so yeah it's like I, I haven't seen a book yet where you have that copyright notice on every single page so um. 
Oh, and then uh, you've also got the option of, of omitting the header and footer on the first page of a chapter. Uh, you'll sometimes see. Uh, let me just uh, close down some of these. Let me just go to the start page. You'll you can see it's it's got the header footer. But if you tell it like the very first page to omit from it, and then it's like, okay, there is no header footer. And you'll, and you'll see that is, can be something kind of common on some books for the first uh, page, it would not have a header and footer. Subsequent pages will. See, this one does, the next one, they all do. Until, okay, here we are down in the next section, first generation, no header footer but then all the subsequent pages do. Go down the second page, okay, that one, no header footer. So like I said, that is something common, but that's what that saying. Um, did you have to file for an official copyright number or just copyright statement? You only need to do a copyright statement. You don't have to file copyrights. Oh. And there is a default for, yeah, because it's like, here, let me just reset the settings. And on that, it says compiled by, you know, and then copyright, you know, blah, 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 by author.name, you know. And that's just the standard boilerplate, all rights reserved, no part, da, 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 so. So, yeah, so, and I mean, and I mean, and just look at any box, any book. Uh, you know, they'll basically have something similar to that, you know. And I, like I said, I've yet to see any book that's got that on every single page. So, and yeah, Bob said copyright is only good if you're willing to go to court and enforce it. And well, that's like with anything. So, um, but like I said, if you would want the copyright stuff on everything, you can do that in Word. So, um, uh, yeah, and the last thing here is you can decide whether you want page numbers just that with the uh, dashes or the word actual page, page, you know, you can have that, you know, um, just how you want that page number to, to be displayed. So here it just says page nine rather than, you know, dash nine dash, you know. So that's about it. So are there any questions? If not, this will be a wrap for this last class. So yeah. um, John, is there any other things that we need to know as far as, you know, cleanup in our trees before we attempt to do all this you know i've gotten some like i say i've gotten some conflicting information <laughs> yeah so um, is there anything you can advise on well to... like i said it's just be consistent in how you do it it's like i mean i was going through this one book uh and found uh oh what was it um I can't bring it up right now. I know the person, but it. Because uh, uh, I want mine to be in, you know, like what uh, Rebecca's doing, you know, in, in kind of a storyline. Uh, so uh, as far as descriptions, is there a certain way to put a description in where it flows into your book? Well, you just have to look at. uh um whoops book items 
is when you uh, do here is like you start looking at how uh, these certain facts print and then it goes like description style. You, you oh, need to place okay. that like this. And a lot of this, like I had one where uh, I'm glad I asked because I, I use I didn't know description that. where a lot of times it's like I want like in place with description because uh, it had a very, uh, for this one, well, well, it was a niece of mine. It, it had a really weirding, oh, well, what fact was it? Oh, <laughs> and also, do I have to do this for like each tab there? Do I go into primary partner, child, blah, 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 in every one so that it has well, well, this? Well, yes and no. It, yeah, uh, you have to go into each to tell it which facts you wanted to be displayed. But let's just say you you were tweaking, say like maybe com com confirmation how this one's going to be described. Uh, let's just say you know I want it like this, uh, and then rather than going through each of them, you can uh, right click and say copy fact type options. And then you can right click again and say paste fact type options for all confirmation fact types. So like, see right now that's in place. That one's out, out at description for partner. And same thing for there. Okay, with confirmation, I changed it in place. So I copied it. Now I wanna paste it to all the confirmation fact types. Hmm. So now if I go to partner, see now it's saying in place, that one that's still not described, see, so. Do, so you're right clicking on confirmation. Yep. You're doing so a I'll, copy. I'll copy but, it. So once I how, got it the way I want it. Where are you it, clicking to paste it? You just. Well, I'm, I'm just right clicking on the confirmation again. And again. then here, then I paste it and then I'll want it to go to all confirmation okay. types. Okay. So that way you can at least do them across so that th they'll be the same. Okay. So that is one little time saving and. Uh, oh, that, yeah, I'm glad you showed that. So, um, Randy has said, can we install FBC on two computers at the same time? I take my saw a smaller surface. Yeah, with the. Yeah, I believe the license is you can have it installed on two computers. I mean, I have it on my desktop and my laptop. So the license does allow you to have it on two computers that you own. So, but do, does that do they sync so that you don't have to keep no. putting? Okay. No. So likewise, uh, you know, you'd you'd save your settings. It creates a file and then. Uh, uh, okay, go, then go and then from you know your laptop, copy that yeah. file and then you can load it. So okay, uh, and the same same thing uh, the same thing goes. It's like if it, uh, for people that use like Family Book Creator, say 2017, and then went to 19, loading 2019 even on the same computer. You didn't, it does, it doesn't read the 2000, it doesn't automatically bring in those 2017 settings. So, and like I said, I don't know, and I'm guessing the same will be with Family Book Creator 2024. So it's like, it's so, a good idea so, to save your settings. So you're saying if you go from 17 to 19, you have to bring in those settings from 2017 into your 2019. Right. I had a load. I had a <clears throat> settings I had saved in 2017. I had to load them into 2019. Okay, and that's pretty easy to do. Well, yeah, it's just save and load. So. Okay, and it it doesn't matter if it's under a different file. I, I mean, a different under the 2017 format. It. In other words, is it converting it to something in yeah, 2019? Yeah, well, well, yeah, because. Uh, yeah, the, the 2017 had a BCS settings, uh, Family Book Creator 2019 has the FBCS. It can load and save either version. And really about the only difference uh, between the two is uh, the BCS, uh, 
does not store the title, call a phone, you know, those, those five pages. It, it doesn't store these five pages. Uh, it saves all the settings and stuff. Uh, and like I said, 2024, I, I don't know if it will use the same format as 2019 or if it will have its own settings format. I mean, that will be a uh, wait and see. But okay. Uh, Thank you, Stefan. Yep. So, and then, uh, yeah, can you change the save settings and resave it? Sure, I do that all the time. Because as I change settings, uh, I'll just, uh, you know, save settings, and then I'll just click on that same one, and then it will ask, do you want to overwrite? I say yes, and then Is it hard them. to... Uh, what would be the steps of saving it on your other laptop? Like I got a small one that I use to just travel with. And then uh, I have my larger laptop that I actually, you know, use on a day-to-day -day basis. How do you just go back and how yeah. do you install it? Well, once you, once you've installed it, uh, you got to just transfer over the settings file and then you'll just go to load settings. No, I mean, how do I, do I go, go back to my email and, and then load it into my smaller laptop? Oh, to, to do it? Well, yeah, all you can do is, yeah, re-download it. And like I said, you can do that right from the Family Book Creators. From our, uh, let me just bring this over here. Because like, say, from the Family Book Creator site, you know, if you click on the Feature Post section. Okay. Uh, let me just... Uh, so there's a link there to download it? Yeah, just look for one of Stefan's posts. Okay. Um, yeah, this is, yeah, it's be, being- And then forward. all we have to do is have the license and, and yeah, put that in. Yeah, the first link has a link to the download area. You just click on it. Mm -hmm. You know, then select your- uh, Which one? Yeah. yeah, whether you're okay. using Windows or Mac, you know. Mm -hmm. Okay. That download that. And mm -hmm. I can't stress enough if you haven't downloaded the user's guide, download that too. Mm -hmm. Uh so install it. And then like I said, you transfer over the settings file. Okay. And I mean me, I use Dropbox, so my settings files are stored in Dropbox. So I can go to my other computer and load up my settings because this is all on my Dropbox. So these are automatically synced between my computers. So Yeah. Okay. So. All right. So, that sounds pretty easy. But otherwise, you know, save on a thumb drive or a portable hard drive. It's, uh, so at that point, though, when I bring it in, um, is it going to ask me for my license number and then you put it in? Yeah, the first time you installed it on your second computer, yes, it will ask you. you. You'll have to type in your name, and that you'll need that email. If you don't, you know, email Stefan at FBC supporter. If you bought it through Software Makiev, you know, live chat should be able to resend you your license information. But we can go in on the about. Oh, yeah. Give us our number. Yeah, yep. So we can just that. go there and it, copy and paste it, couldn't we? Yeah. Yeah. Like I I I mean I keep it in a little text file. I always save the download files. Okay. Um Yeah, I have then, my then I I'll think create I like one. a little text file, you know, for anything for like a serial or registration number. Okay. So that way it's like if I ever have to reinstall something, it's like I, I know exactly the directory to go to and oh here's any registration info. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, I mean, I've done that with charting Japan in just any program that I've downloaded. So, okay. Uh, so. Okay. 
but yeah, click on the serial number and it will box and it will appear. So yeah, and then you but, can just copy and paste it. Yep. Okay. Yep. So okay, well, I have, uh there's no more questions. I'll sign off and then this will be up uh well within an hour or so. So on the YouTube okay. channel. Okay, thank you. Yep. Okay. Take care, everyone. Um, thank you. Yep. Take care.